Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I thought I'd talk a little today about God's sense of humor. And I have to say, we used to say in the country at home, right from the get-go, <laughs> that it's going to be hard to understand his sense of humor unless you feel very neutral about the law of karma. It took me a while to get used to it. <laughs> so, um, let's see. Well, I know a story of a person, uh, a person who passed on, and then I, I heard this clear audiently, and then his his soul was thinking maybe it would like to reincarnate. I might have told you this story. Maybe it would like to reincarnate, and so it was mulling all that over on the astral plane, very close to me because it was somebody I used to know, and um, his his. Spirit guides came along and they were, they were, they were chatting together, right? And uh, he said, they, oh, they offered him two or three different possibilities. At this moment, they said, would you like to reincarnate? And now, and he said, well, yeah, that might be good, like that, right? And then they said, well, there's a couple of possibilities. And they kind of went off in a corner and they talked about a couple of possibilities. And the one that they settled on was the one that I heard about. And that was, um, I'd like to sing God's name for, the, for my new incarnation my whole life long. And they, they looked, apparently they like saw the slate for all over earth of available like um, pregnant ladies. <laughs> and they said, ah, here's a possibility here in, um, in India. You know, in India, lots of times people spend their lives chanting God's name. In, in many, any number of occupations. And so he said, he knew about India, and he said, sure. And um, and so he, his soul started to descend down, right? And to earth again, into the earthly plane. And the mother was willing, I assume, and he was on his way down, and then his spirit guide said, oh, by the way, they said, um, you're gonna be a woman. And, and he said, what? He was still going down, though, and, and, and then they said, Oh, by the way, it's a brothel in Bombay. And, and he said, Oh! And then the next instant he was there with his mother. So, so there are ups and downs of um, reincarnation because they're working out of the law of karma, as Bill Ballard calls them. He calls them the, um, the resolution of our have our magnetics, our electromagnetic field, and other people call them the clarification of that field to return to the great light that we really are, our soul light and our, our true splendor. So, so this working out of karma, it's a very neutral kind of thing, you know. Now I want to tell you about another instance. It's a much more, oh well, it's a kind of instance where you're likely to take sides, but God doesn't, and the law of karma doesn't. It's very neutral, okay? So, I know of an instance, uh, it had to do with one of the concentration camps uh, during the Second World War in Germany, where many people of Jewish faith lost their lives. And there was an instance of a person uh, incarnated as a man, uh, you know, a fair-haired Caucasian man, and those were greatly favored by that regime as being uh, the superior race. And uh, that man was chosen to to supervise one this concentration camp or to have an uh, authoritative role in this concentration camp. And some of the things that he did. <clears throat> Uh, what should I say? He would, he, I won't go through the whole story, but, but he did dispatch, personally dispatch with his pistol, uh, quite a few people of, of Jewish culture and many children, many families. And so the list is very long of those, um, 
of those murders that he did during that time. Now, he, um, he, he didn't think of it at that time as that. His thought was that people who were of Jewish culture were, would be better off, it would be better for the world if people of, I'm trying to say it from his perspective, if people of Jewish culture were all, um, were all dead. Obviously he didn't believe in reincarnation, <laughs> and he had a great list of atro atrocities to his name, you know. Now, keep in mind that this is, um, this is all a game. It's like playing a game of football. You know, one team maybe plays a lot rougher than an another team, and, and, uh, but in the long run through the incarnation, the teams keep getting switched. So on one, te on one incarnation, you're in the rough team. Uh, and, and you're always winning the football games. Your team wins all the time. In the next incarnation, what do you know? You're in the gentle uh, side that always gets like s s smashed, the side that's always losing. On and on it goes like this. You may go one, two, three in the rough side, and then three, four, f four five, six in the, uh, on, the, on the gentle side. But it always even, it has to even out for you. So, to get back to this gentleman who was uh, doing what he felt to be the right thing for Earth in the concentration camps, he passed on. So, after, after a while, he decided to reincarnate, and his spirit guide, and he said, to, and he said what did he say? Well, I should include some more of the story, I guess. Part of the thing that he did over there had to do with um, um, rape, you know, that was commonplace there. And part of it had to do with killing. So when he decided to reincarnate, uh, how he fr must have phrased it, I'm, I'm gathering this after the fact, how he must have phrased it is that uh, he, he, he didn't want to do to rape any longer. And uh, he didn't... Um, he right he didn't want to rape people any longer and uh and that was what he said apparently so he came back and i can only imagine on his way down you know the sphere guys he's going oh how's it going he's going i'm going down i've i've determined it and he gets about halfway down and the spirit guide goes by the way you're going to be jewish <laughs> <laughs> and that, in fact, is apparently what happened. He became Jewish. Now, uh, when he was born, uh, because of his past life, his very recent past lifetime, he, he immediately, as soon as he found out he was Jewish, he, he, he felt that, that life was not worth living. And that is because in the past lifetime, he thought that Jewish people uh, were not worth existing on earth, you know. So he's, in other words, he's gone through his life never knowing why he felt that way, but in fact, his past lifetime determined that. And uh, in addition, uh, in an early age, he suffered a self-inflicted genital mutilation that made it impossible for him to rape anyone physically. Now here's here's where the sense of humor comes. The sense of humor came in first of all, if you can imagine that he became that which he had previously felt was, and and there's a balancing of energies going on there. You see, and um, the second thing that happened is that uh, the form that his not raping took was um, was a form of like. Um, the opposite acting out from from raping is to rape oneself in that way to, to mutilate one's genitals and and further because he had built up a very large um, samskara you know uh, like a, a prenatal tendency by all those deaths that had happened he had built up a huge tendency to kill and to rape and so uh, what happened was his his astral body, his emotional body, carried those tendencies into the astral realm. And so 
while he's, he was sleeping and while, uh, while his mental mind wasn't working, he was out there actually um, attempting to kill people on the astral plane and, uh, and with his hatred that was part of that prenatal tendency and um, also uh, to rape people you know through the words that were stored in his in his second chakra in his lower body from his previous lifetime now this may seem pretty horrible to you but in fact this is the way that the law of karma works and if you stand back from it if you stand back and, and just look at it neutrally You'll see energetics at work that need to be resolved. You'll see a clarification of like the energy body that needs to take place. And you won't be thinking so much about the right and wrong of the, the earthly roles that we, that we undertake in various lifetimes. Because over many lifetimes, they're bound to even out. And all of us, every single one of us right now, needs to do a huge amount of clearing. It's like football, you know, we win, we lose, we lose, we win, it goes on and on, and finally, at the end of the day, everybody has to tend to their injuries. Everybody gets in the hospital, everybody does their best to feel, uh, feel to cure what's, what's ailing them from all of these injuries that they've received over the dramatic display of the third dimensional duality game. Well, don't be shocked. <laughs> I'll probably come up with some more of this from time to time because I've, I've finally come to the point of view that it's, it's interesting. It's like a, a light show and dark show, you know, flickering, like a movie. And it's not that important, but it is report, very important to, 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 to heal our wounding and to cure ourselves of all of the, the cellular memories, the trauma that we've uh, incurred over all the lifetimes. Well, so if you find yourself in that situation, or you notice that, that you've been in the football game, don't feel bad, okay? It's just a game.